Welcome back artists. In this video I'm going to color in this hummingbird that I drew in the preceding video. I'll put a link to that down in the description. This is traditional watercolor and when we work in a traditional manner with watercolor we typically go from lights to darks. The hummingbird has a red patch immediately at the top on the throat and then below that on the chest is a white area. Those will be the lightest areas so I could Let's start there. Now, although it's white, I'll add a little bit of blue just to make it look three-dimensional. I have to have a shadow side. And that extends down here on the bird. Comes up here a little bit on the tail end, too. Just a little bit. Okay, now it's a bright red patch on the bird. And again, to make it look three-dimensional, I'm going to have to have a strong color side with a little bit of a light. Drop in a little alizarin crimson. That's usually, you now charge it with some red like this. It's called charging when you drop in one color on top of another. Now the overall body of the bird is green, a light green. This is sap green that I'm the color that I'm using. But keeping in mind the idea of uh, it's a three-dimensional bird. I'm left-handed, my source of light is off the page at 10 o'clock. If I were right-handed, it would be the opposite, off the page at 2 o'clock. Just as a matter of default. Unless you put the source of light in the painting itself. But I'm going to put some color on and then pull it a little bit with just a wet brush. And then I'll drop in some Viridian which is this strong cool green has a lot more blue in it as you can see. Again I'm just the beauty of watercolor, the, really the magic of it is put it on then let the colors infuse together and it gets that very traditional look. To help emphasize a three dimension, charge in a little bit of extra blue here. There's a lot of blue in that viridian that I used. This is Prussian blue, which is a transparent blue. Now when you paint loosely like I do, you intentionally paint outside the lines. And especially for something like a hummingbird, where his wings are moving so fast, this is a great technique. His legs are a dark brownish black. That's quinacridone burnt orange, and then drop in a little more Prussian blue on top. Okay, now the big main wing feathers are sort of a grayish color. I have this color called buff titanium. All right, let's give them some red flowers. We use some red there, and whenever we're painting, we try to use colors multiple places around the painting, not just in one spot. So, we'll get some more red flowers here. Okay, we've got to do his beak too, so we'll do his beak. Beak is very dark. We'll do it like we did the feet. There's our bird mostly done. Now let's add in a little bit more background just to add a little more context. For my sky, I'm just using um, cerulean blue and cobalt blue. This might seem counterintuitive, but when you do this, it's going to offset the red in the opposite corner. A little bit of extra dry brush technique right on the wing feathers, just to touch a little bit. Okay, there we go. There's our hummingbird. We started with the line drawing, then we added in our watercolor paints, so this is now a line and wash hummingbird. Please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.